So remember when I said that one of my biggest goals this year was to have my best reading year ever? Well, <laughs> we're gonna be doing a year long video series to make that happen. I am calling it Year of Rex. It's gonna be the year of book recommendations, baby. I am so excited, I'm kind of nervous. I've never done a series like this where we're gonna have one episode every single month of a reading vlog where I get personalized book recommendations from a particular source. <laughs> I don't want to phrase it because I don't, I don't want to give away any of our future episodes. But yeah, every single month I'm going to get personalized book recommendations in the hope that it helps me have my best reading year ever. And I'm very excited. So there will be one episode every single month. For the first episode, I knew immediately what I wanted to do. And it is when I think of like personalized book recommendations, the most fun thing I've ever seen, I've always wanted to do for a video. And that is paying a professional to give me book recommendations. You might need a little professional help. I first saw this with Books and Lala. Kayla did a video on this a couple years ago. It's a platform called TBR and you give them information and they give you book recommendations based on that information. A few people have done it since and it's my turn. It's my turn. <laughs> I'm so excited, I always wanted to do it. So today we're gonna be paying a bookish professional book recommender to give me book recommendations. And I'm really hoping, like a lot of the other sources we're gonna do, a few of the other ones are paid, but a lot of the other ones are free. So I'm intrigued to see what paying for the book recs gets me. And I'm really, I'm setting my hopes quite high. So let me go take you through what I put when they asked me for the information that would determine what my book recommendations would be. So, I, <laughs> tell you how excited I was when I first made my account. So TBR, it stands for Tailored Book Recommendations. I'm sure some of you will be wondering about the price. There is a version where they send you the books, but that's only available, I think, to people in the US. It's $18 per quarter, which is about £14, which I think for like three book recommendations is quite a lot. However, you are getting someone who's really sitting down and spending the time to really think about what books would be perfect for you. And you get the book recommendations within two weeks. So like, it, it kind of feels like they, you know, they've gone away and they've really thought about it. They could have, you know, it could have been done in a minute, but. <laughs> So you first got asked what your favorite genres are. I told them that mystery and fantasy are my most read genres, followed by thriller and horror. Then you get asked, is there anything you want to explore more of in your reading life? And I was like, you gotta give me the big boys. <laughs> Being a bit saucy. I basically said, I, I like reading widely in terms of genres, but I really like books that feel new, that feel like they're twisting genres, that feel like they're doing something innovative. And I said, I would love to read more speculative slash sci-fi murder mysteries, which is interesting. That's interesting that I said that. Oh my God, I feel like actually, this is so interesting looking back, knowing what the book recommendations are. You'll find out in a second. Um, or fantastical horror. So I really like books that merge genres, right? I love fantastical historical mysteries, right? I love books that, that merge genres and it's not easy to um, pick what genre they are. Then they asked me what are the last two books you loved and why? And I was like, oh. <laughs> how can you ask me that? Wow, that's, that's a great question. I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> difficult. So I told them The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman, which was my favourite book of last year. I told them how much it made me cry. I love that it's a murder mystery series. I love My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I thought this would be a fun one to tell them that I loved because it's very like my flavour of horror. Like if I could only tell them, I thought maybe they'd recommend me horror. And if I could only tell them one horror that I love, it's like the camp, right? <laughs> Grady Hendrix really is the epitome of my flavour of horror. And then I said Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. Um, because I thought the, the true crime element of that was very interesting and I thought it was handled really well and I really also enjoyed the characters and the way the characters have been handled in that book. And then you get asked, would you like your bibliologist, <laughs> god it sounds so official, um, to balance books that fit your current style or books that branch out? And I went slap back, bang in the middle, like a mix of familiar and also stuff that stretches my reading style. You then get asked, are you looking for recommendations on a certain theme? I said no. And then you get asked anything else you want your bibliologist to know before they pick your books. And I gave them my Goodreads link. <laughs> and I was like, the books on the horror shelf or the fantasy shelf are books that I haven't read yet because I use that for TBR Cluedo. Every book that's unread on my TBR, I have on genre shelves for me to then look through when I get prompts on TBR Cluedo to find out what fits. So I was like, Please, I don't mind if you recommend me one of those because I already own them and thus don't have to buy them. I didn't say that. <laughs> 
but I wouldn't have minded being recommended something that I already own. So that was the initial questions. And then I did get an email saying we have more questions <laughs> for you to fill out, which I did film me reacting to. So I'll hand you over to Pass Megan, um, filling out those questions and then finding out what the three recommendations are, what the three books we're gonna be reading are. I just got an email that they've asked me more questions. What could they possibly need to know? I mean, time to stop being so obsessed with me. I feel like Mariah Carey. I have an open back. <laughs> I thought I'd be easy. Do they do this to everyone? Or is it just a me thing? Is it just me? I've just like plonked you down. This is, I literally just got the email. Oh my God, there's loads of questions. Oh my God. What are your all time favorite? This is, <laughs> what are your all time favorite books and why? Um, <laughs> I did a video on this. Um, what was in my, what's my top five? Thursday Murder Club, Secret History, Babel, Strange Casey, Alchemist Daughter, Once and Future Witches. Oh okay, God, okay, okay. I mean, what do you mean and why? Should I just link my video? <laughs> it's the life of a diva, eh? Is that, is that a bit ridiculous? Listen, they asked me my last three books that I have fa my favorite and this is all I can type. I have a, there's a, there's a character limit and I couldn't, I could barely type what I wanted for three books that I recently liked, let alone you asking me my favorite books of all time. Any books you absolutely hated? Fourth. I'm trying to think of big ones. They need to know the big ones. Alice Feeney. I just don't think about the books I've hated. I don't, unless I have to. I don't spend time thinking about them. Also haven't enjoyed The Housemaid's Secret. I've been, let's just say I haven't enjoyed Freedom McFadden. A few of your favorite TV shows and or movies. Favorite movies are Con Air, Die Hard, and Moulin Rouge. The duality of a woman. Currently <laughs> loving Real Housewives body. <laughs> Real Housewives of Salt Lake City finale, one of the best pieces of media ever. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything. Tom has been watching Real Housewives of Salt Lake City with me the last couple of episodes of them in Bermuda. Oh my god. There we go. More questions answered. <laughs> I'm getting a bit nervous. <coughs> it's setting me off. Okay, wish me luck. Let's, we'll see how that goes. Okay, everyone, the moment has come. <laughs> it's almost midnight. I'm in bed. I was ready for bed. I'm wearing pajamas that I know I'm not gonna have to take away with me to Wales. <laughs> that I haven't worn in years. My heated blanket is on, like I'm prepped for bed. And then I got the email that my pigeon has arrived. <laughs> That's what they call that when you're, when you're um, recommendations come in. And I couldn't possibly sleep. You expect me to go to sleep knowing that my recommendations are in? Sorry, couldn't possibly do that. So we're gonna find out. I feel sick. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is so exciting to me. I am so excited. Wow, what a moment. What a moment. I hope they've given me a mystery. I'm really in the mood for a mystery and I haven't got any mysteries coming up lately. So I hope they've got a mystery for me. Okay, the recommendations. <gasps> Hi, Megan. Welcome to TBR. I'm Ray and I'm here to help you find your next great read. For today's picks, I chose three books. You'll love it. Balance what you want more over your favorite genres. The first pick is a fantasy book. The second one is a sci-fi novella. And the third one is a thriller. Enjoy. First book. Oh, the book eaters. Okay, I've heard really good things about the book eaters. I'm down for that. First, you want more genre bending stories and even mentioned a fantasy horror mix, which is why I picked the book eaters. With some seriously incredible world building and a nice horror atmosphere, this book follows Devon, a woman who belongs to the family. They are a clan of book eaters, so they feast upon the contents of any story for sustenance. Devon's life is ruled by her clan, so she's raised on a specific diet of fairy tales and cautionary stories, but her whole life is turned upside down when her son is born because his hunger is not for for words but for minds okay I'm down for that I've seen other people read and enjoy the book eaters and I think I will enjoy it so I think that's a good pick okay what is this tea and murder the citadel of weeping pearls and the tea master and detective what ah! <laughs> so excited <laughs>
Next, I think you'll really love this novella that is both a great sci-fi story as well as a murder mystery. Or if you want the audiobook version, it's bound up with another novella under the name Tea and Murder. What one are we going for? The Tea Martin Detective? Okay, the Tea Martin Detective follows a scholar named Long Chow and the ship she chowdles on named The Shadow's Child. Long Chow loves scientific study, so she asks the ship for a corpse. The Shadow's Child provides one, but when they discover that the person was murdered, the two embark on an investigation that seems to point to Long Chow's own past. I haven't heard of that. That's exciting. A book I haven't heard of. That sounds great. That sounds... Listen. Sci-fi murder mystery. Ah, put me down. Put me down for that. Okay, what's our last one? Haven't heard of this one either. River Woman, River Demon. A great thriller that's some witchy magical elements as well as some horror ones. <gasps> so once again, it mixes several of your favourite genres. We follow Eva Santos. I'm gonna not... I can't pronounce these words. It's midnight. I am bad at pronunciation, as we know, to begin with. An artist who practices these things. She's going through a tough time, especially since her husband was arrested for murder that was eerily similar to one from her childhood. Soon enough, Evie ever herself becomes a suspect, and the only way to find out the truth is if she comes face to face with her own past. <gasps> Thank you, Ray. That is so exciting. Wow, what an interesting selection of books. Only one I've heard of, but the other two sound really good as well. I'm really happy with that. I think that's a really, really good selection. I gotta go get my hands on these books, but what an exciting beginning. Oh, okay. I love that. I love that. Okay, all our books are here. We need to decide what we're gonna read. We've got the T. Marston Detective, nice short sci-fi novella. We've got the Book Eaters, which can I just say has like the smallest font known to Matt. That is diabolical. What is going on there? <laughs> and then we've got River Woman, River Demon. Here's the thing. These are the two I am most confident I'm gonna love, right? This one, well, I don't know anything about it. This one, these two I've heard about. Lots of people love the Bookitas. And I remember Mara read this and I think quite enjoyed it. I haven't heard anyone read this. However, my first three books of the year have been fantasy. And I think I'm fed up. <laughs> And I don't know if this has fantastical elements, but it's from what I know, like a psychological thriller. And I think that might be what I need. But also I wanna, I've had such a bad reading year. Like I want what I'm gonna give a five star. And this is bottom of the list for me. I should really read this in the middle as like a little break in between the other two longer ones. I mean, they're not too long, but they are longer. This is such a difficult decision. And I read the first page of all of them. I often, when I haul books, I like to read the first page of them. And I really loved the first page of the book eaters. No, I'm gonna start with River Woman, River Demon. That might be a mistake, but these are all supposed to be my perfect books, you know? So I'm gonna start this. I'll let you know what I'm thinking when I'm a little bit of the ways through. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'm hoping I'm gonna love it. Listen, these should all be five stars, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's my logic. Okay. I feel like I made the perfect choice with the book that we chose first. So I started River Woman, River Demon. I'm 100 pages in. I'm semi obsessed. I'm really enjoying this. So it has got a little bit of a fantastical element. Apparently I'm just like fated to read fantasy for like my first 10 books of the year. <laughs> but essentially what we need to know about this is we're following this lady. I don't even know what her name is. You know when you're following, oh, Eva. You know when you follow a main character so much you hear her say everyone else's names, but you don't, <laughs> like you're in her head so much, you don't hear everyone else say her name. So basically one of her and her husband's friends is found dead in the river behind their property and her husband might have killed her. It basically, all the evidence is pointing towards her husband. But as a reader, you're kind of like, you know, when you read a lot of these books, you're like, I don't know, you know, he's being framed, you know, he's a black man, so the police maybe assume, you know, with our biases and racism that they've got, that it's him, but there's a lot of evidence <laughs> that's pointed to him. So unless that evidence is somehow falsified or something's going on, like, there's, there's something weird going on. Also, she's finding out now, I don't want to tell you, but something, we just had a bit of a plot twist at the, like, just before 100 page mark of like information or something she did that she doesn't remember that really points to her husband having done it or her. <laughs> and so basically it's her trying to figure out who killed their friend. But she is kind of grappling with, does she trust her husband? Does she think he did it? And I started this last night. I read like the first 30 pages and I knew I had to go sleep. So I was like, okay, I've got to put it down now. But you know, you get that thing where you're like, you, you're like, okay, I'm going to finish reading. But then you flick through the next like 30 pages scanning it. Do you want spoilers? 
Even though a lot of what happened was in the synopsis, I wanted to see it happen like through her eyes. I think she's such an interesting character. The fantastical element is she practices magic and kind of like spiritual magic. Um, and so that's an interesting element. She's also suffered with postpartum depression and kind of talks about like still being in a fog, stuff still happening to her. Like, am I still in postpartum depression like 10 years on? And she's got her own insecurities. Like from the beginning, even before the murder happens, you can see she kind of like doubts whether her husband is faithful to her, but he's always like, he seems like a nice guy when they're talking, but then whenever they're apart, she's like, he fucking someone else. Like she believes it quite readily. She's just a very interesting character to read from the perspective of. And also she's got stuff that happened in the past where her best friend drowned in a river and people thought that she did it. I just think there's a lot of really interesting layers to it. And I think it's written really well. There's something about it that I'm finding just so, propulsively readable. And I don't know if that's just because I haven't been reading books that are like, readable. <laughs> do you see how that's incredibly offensive? Yes, I do, that's why I said it. I just don't know, I don't know how much of what I'm enjoying this is like me really, really enjoying this book or just that it's like finally. <laughs> something that I don't hate. Do you know what I mean? But I'm loving it. I'm eating it up. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I love when I come across a book through like a challenge video, or hopefully I'll come across quite a few books like this throughout doing this series where I'd never heard of the book, right? The other two books in this video I had heard of, I'd never heard of this. And it's such a pleasant surprise. I'm loving the, what well, is obviously the author's own culture, how that's been infused into the book. I think it's dealing with social issues very well. And I feel like we're only just getting the beginning. So I'm gonna try and read another 100 pages tonight. I don't know if I'll check in with you tonight or first thing in the morning, but it's a very interesting, interesting perspective that we're reading from. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. This could be a, a hit, first thing. First book of the series, <laughs> it could be a hit. Okay, <laughs> we're like, I'm 200 pages in now and we've got to amend my statements a little bit. <laughs> oh. No, this has now gone downhill. Tom is making dinner downstairs, by the way. If you can hear noises, that's what that is. Okay, I'm 200 pages in. Here's the thing. Throughout this whole book, our girlie has been doing things that I haven't necessarily agreed with, right? And I've been kind of like, up until the halfway point, I was of the opinion that, you know, characters don't have to be perfect. Our main characters, our narrators, any characters, don't owe you moral perfection, right? They can do things you don't agree with. They can do shitty things. They do not have to be like this perfect person. However, <laughs> at the end of the day, her husband has just been arrested. Not only is she going through it, but her seven-year-old and 11-year-old are incredibly going through it. Her seven-year-old has stopped speaking, right? And her sister is the one who has to tell her this. And throughout the book, it seems that she's been completely detached from any care for her children. She's asking them to do shit for her and protect her and their children. There seems to be like, no care for them and no support for them through what they're going through with their father. And at the halfway point, she's just started doing something that makes that a hundred times worse. Not only negligent, actively harming her children. I've had it. Enough. You know what they And I'm not sure that the right the author, the character's sister sometimes is making comments to her like you need to be there for your kids, you need to stop doing what you're doing. But also the sister is like in the narration being painted as like, oh she's just so like annoying, she's always on my case, she thinks she's my mum, you know, and other characters are saying that about her. So it's not being adequately rebuffed, in my opinion. And like, like I said, characters don't owe you perfection, but it's just pissing me off now. <laughs> I was fine with it for the first half. I was fine with her doing things I didn't agree with. And I think it made her an interesting character to read from. But now her actions are just making this book a little bit insufferable for me. <laughs> and it's just all that the book is. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's overtaking the whole book, this new development that happened at the halfway point. And it's just, it's beyond selfish. It's like, it boggles the brain. I don't understand how anyone could behave like this. I don't wanna get any deeper into it without spoiling it, but it's just really pissing me off. And like, she's become the villain in my opinion. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. 
Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. Like it's what it's doing to her kids that really upsets me. And they, it's, this is a fictional character, right? But I can't root for her anymore. And like up until the halfway point, she was, from the beginning, she does stuff that's morally a little bit, you know, sometimes like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. But I was still rooting for her. I can't, I can't do it. And I understand some of the reasons why the character is doing this. But just as the reader, it's not some of the morals around the other aspects of it, it's what it's doing to her kids. That, and she just doesn't seem to care. She doesn't seem to care. Like her, when her kids are being actively upset and obviously actively upset, she's like, ah, I don't know why. I, don't, I can't just get over it. Anyways, I'm gonna go finish it. I'm gonna finish it tonight. At the moment, here's the thing. The beginning was like a 4.5, the first 100 pages. These last 100 pages have been like a 2.5. So at the moment, it's a 3.5. We'll see what the last 100 pages do to this book. Ugh. Okay, alas. <laughs> I don't even wanna talk about it. It's gonna be a 2.5. I feel completely crushed right now. Am I cursed? I have not had a read above a three star yet this year. <laughs> I actually don't know why is this happening to me? Um, I finished it this morning and really it was the way that my girly was acting in the second half of the book just kept me from having any emotional attachment to the book. We started off on such a strong start. I thought it could be a five star from the beginning and we just, <laughs> we just, I obviously can't say much about you know, what she was doing that was annoying me, but it did, like, it's all that's consuming my brain. <laughs> Everything that I wanna talk about is spoilers. But I am just so angry with her. And yeah, but also understanding, like you do, I, she's, she is an interesting main character to read from. That's why I was enjoying it from the first half because you do kind of feel for her, but then she just keeps making these stupid decisions. Ugh. <laughs> You know, there was so much I loved about this. You know, our main character and the author are described as being Chicana, which I think is of uh, Mexican native heritage. And I thought the way that that was infused was beautifully done. I thought the way that trauma exists within the body, within the mind was beautifully done. But <laughs> I was just so pissed off. It pissed me off. So I'm really upset about this. It had such a strong start and I don't necessarily hold it against the rec you know, the recommendation because I think, you know, this is, is a murder mystery with a speculative element, with kind of horror elements. I really should have loved this if Girlie hadn't fucked up. <laughs> So as I'm getting ready, I'm gonna get ready for the day now and I'm gonna go listen to the audiobook of the tea master and the detective and I'll probably finish it off once I'm ready. It's only like 80 pages. I'm only gonna listen to this short story. I've got the audiobook and there's like two short stories, but I'm just gonna listen to this one because this is the one that was recommended. And I think this one has like a murder mystery element as well. Yeah, this is the one where there's like a corpse given to her by the ship and it's, um, the but the corpse has been murdered and they try and figure out what happened. So I am, listen, I'm gonna read probably most of this and the book eater today. I'm gonna have a cozy reading day is the vibe for today. So I'm hoping we're gonna have our first at least 3.5 of the year. That's not too much to ask for. <laughs> Does that sound like something you want? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. It's 3.5 too much to ask for. So I'm gonna go start this and I'll let you know once I finished it because it's really short. So I'm just gonna read the whole thing and then check in with you. Okie dokie, I have finished The Tea Master and The Detective. What do I want to tell you first? <laughs> so the synopsis is basically all that I've told you is that we've got these two characters, one who is a detective, one is a tea master, but is like a ship, which I didn't know going into it. It's like a, there's these things called mind ships, which I think are kind of ships, kind of people. They're like a strange <laughs> amalgamation of the two. And they're in space, they're in deep space, and a body, they find a body and it's been murdered and they endeavor to uncover what happened together. And what I did not know, and I found out when reading a review about 20 pages in, it's a study in Scarlet retelling, aka the first Sherlock and Watson um, novel, novella, I guess. That made me enjoy it a lot more. Now, <laughs> I guess you're wondering, okay, did it get a 3.5? I'm gonna give it a three. I'm gonna give it a three. And no. What? No. And not because there was anything wrong with it. I just don't think I fully connected to it. Is that okay? Can I say that? Is this a safe space? The stuff this had about trauma was very beautiful. I really, really enjoyed the writing style. I would definitely be interested in reading from Elliot de Bodard in the future. And I think this is like a universe. I've marked this as a companion book on my spreadsheet because I don't think this is a series, but there's lots of books set in this universe. But 
I just felt at a distance from everything the entire time. This is only 80 pages long. Like this book isn't all the book. Let me show you where it ends. It ends there, right? That's all like other stuff. <laughs> so this is all that the book is. And when I think of other novellas that I love, I do think I prefer things that sit around the like 150 to 200 page mark. So a little bit of a longer novella. Cause I just don't feel like I really have enough time to get uh, connected to the characters. It reminded me a lot of Binti in that it's sci-fi to do with ships. <laughs> slightly sentient ships. I mean, this one more so. But in both of those books, I just felt like I didn't get emotionally attached. And also a problem with this one for me, I mean, I really struggle when I can't picture stuff that's happening. I know not everyone can picture stuff when they're reading, but I really struggle when I don't have a clear vision of what's going on. And I loved the idea, for example, of the mind ships, but did I actually understand like what physical form <laughs> they were taking not really and so when they're having conversations between the two of them like in a tea shop i'm like what form are you like what's going on here <laughs> for me not to be able to picture it is a problem for me you know so that that kept me at a distance but like i said i love the writing having read a study in scarlet not too long ago i really enjoyed seeing the parallels between them and i really enjoyed long chow's character the character who is the Sherlock equivalent a lot more once I was able to kind of make that parallel and see the way that they differed or were similar. <sighs> but yeah. <laughs> It's a three, it's a three. Maybe like a 3.25, but I think that's pushing it. I think it's a three. Uh, I'm glad I read it. I'd be interested in reading more in this world, but it just felt a bit short for me. I would have liked a bit more. You know what I mean? It's not really a murder mystery when you only really meet one character who it could be, right? And it ends up being that, like you only meet one character other than these two, the person that's murdered, or maybe two, we met two characters, but I mean, it's pretty obvious who's gonna be responsible. So it's not really a murder mystery then, in my opinion. Okay, time to get into our last one, The Book Eaters. Like I said, I'm gonna try and read this entire thing today. I'm gonna edit a bit more of this video and then I'm gonna sit down and read loads of The Book Eaters. And when I read the first page, this was the one that I enjoyed the most. Just, I just hate how tiny the font is. I don't know if you guys can fully tell. I mean, this has large font. This, So I'd say like normal font is in between these two. But can you see that difference? It's like psychotic. I hate it. Anyways, I'm gonna start the book eaters. I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of the way through. We'll see. I really love the idea of these. Let's hope I love it, shall we? <laughs> It's very late, I'm tired, <laughs> but I am halfway through The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean and I'm happy to say I am enjoying it. My hair has gone crazy. What is going on up in here? Can you? <laughs> Wigs! Wigs? Can we calm down? What is happening? Okay, yeah, I'm really enjoying it guys. I'm really having a fun time. So basically all you need to know is that there's this like long lineage of six old book eater families living in England. They eat stories, they eat books to survive. They don't eat, they're like this, they're not human, they're this special breed, they eat books to survive. And we're following Devon in the present day, she is looking after her five-year-old son, who is like a mind eater, which is like a, I don't know, <laughs> like offshoot I, they, they have, I guess, where kids can be born that like don't want to eat books. They want to eat people's brains uh, unless they have a very specific drug. So she's like, she, you know, she's willing in for her son at the start of this book. She's getting brains for him. I don't believe in the glorification of murder. I do believe in the empowerment of women. So we're following them as they're trying to get safe. She's trying to help her son. But then we're also following Devon in the past timeline, kind of, we've already spanned about four years, four or five years, I think, in the past timeline of her as a woman in this book eater society, the kind of pressures on them to birth children because it's a dwindling, there's only six families. They got to like carefully arrange the marriages so there's no inbreeding. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. So she is like, basically they, what they do is they force the women to go get married and they give, they give birth to a baby and they're allowed to stay with the child for like the first three years, but then you gotta get out of here. And Devon ain't happy about that. She's missing her daughter. So that's basically the plot. That's basically the plot. And as you can already start to guess, yes, it is your timeline. Yes, it is your timeline. Mm, it is your timeline, which we all know. <laughs> 
is not my favorite thing. Um, but I'm not hating it in this. I am becoming, I think, more attached to the past timeline. There has been some fun twists in the present timeline, which I wasn't expecting and were kind of interesting. And I, I, they're kind of twists that we still don't know a ton about. But part of the reason we don't talk about them is because it's a split timeline. <laughs> I agree. I have had it. And I'm so, you know what I have? It. It. People love, like in the book world, love saying that dual timeline or split timelines work because they leave you as the reader wanting more, right? As you finish one timeline, you go to the other one, you want to know what happened in the other one, and then you want to know what happened in the other one. But it just doesn't work that way for me. Maybe I should have put I don't like dual timelines on the thing. Would you guys be interested in me trying this out again as another episode? I don't know if whether we want it to take up space in another episode considering my six months hasn't been the best. But if I were to do it again, maybe I would put like the list of the things that I found I loved in my five star audit and then tropes I don't like like in my one star order and give them that list because that might be helpful it's but this is partly on me but I am really enjoying it I'm really enjoying it in spite of that I think the writing is very interesting I'm really enjoying this world of like the bookie to families that has been built up I think it's the kind of thing that if you like you know looked at it closely for too long there might be some plot holes or you know some things that don't really make sense like oh they don't like humans because they're so much more powerful like the book eaters are so much powerful than humans, but we haven't seen a lot of evidence of that. Do you know what I mean? There's certain things that like, if you really look, mm, there could be like problems with the logic, but if you like stand back and squint, it's fine. <laughs> I'm having a fun time reading it. I'm really invested in Devon's story, but I would say I am currently more interested in the past timeline, which isn't the best situation to be in because that is not what is moving the plot forward. Like eventually it is gonna have to leave the past timeline. Like there is probably gonna be a point in this book for like the last 70 pages. We don't have any of the past timeline is my guess. So that doesn't bode well, you know? You want the past, you want the present timeline to be what is propulsively moving this story forward for me. But at the moment, I would say it's a tentative four star, which <laughs> I'm not one to knock a gift horse in the mouth. That is the best I have seen in quite some time. So I'm gonna finish this probably tonight or in the morning and I'll check in with you once I've finished it and we will work out and we will see how we feel this vlog has gone. Bearing in mind, this is supposed to help me have my best reading year ever. <laughs> okay, good morning. I have finished the book eaters and I'm gonna land on a 3.5 for this. So we can celebrate the fact that it is my highest rated book I've read so far this year, but that's not much. It hasn't got much competition. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. It wasn't a four in the end because the second half had a few pacing issues for me. I feel like it dragged a bit and I feel like the issue was that the past timeline was catching up too much with the present timeline and thus it wasn't as interesting to me. And it just, uh, I really should have put on my, it's my fault. <laughs> I should have put on my feedback. Don't give me dual timeline. I don't like it. <laughs> On the whole, I do think this is a very successful book. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit experimental. I really enjoyed the themes of motherhood in this. I really enjoy any books really with a theme of motherhood or sisterhood. Um, I thought it was a very interesting way that the story left off. This, is good. this could definitely become a series. I don't think it is. I think I read on Goodreads like she would love to do a sequel but doesn't necessarily know if that's gonna happen. But it does definitely leave it open to a sequel. I thought the alternative England was very interesting. There was a lot that I thought was successful about it. But I think this is also a debut or I think maybe she published like short stories but I think this is her debut novel and I think for a debut novel it's very successful. So we're landing on a 3.5. Something that I can't remember if I told you guys is that this series there's actually gonna be a, a battle between each vlog to see which one <laughs> gets me the best book. So the average rating of these three books here is a three. So I'm deeming a vlog a success if it gets a 3.8 or higher, which is what I need my average rating to be this year in order to have my best reading year ever. And so this vlog, unfortunately, uh -uh, we're deeming it a failure. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You did your best, but I guess your best wasn't good enough. I do think this service is so much fun. I think it'll be something that'd be so fun to gift to a bookish person in your life. I think maybe I could have specified more what works me and what doesn't, but also there's like a character limit. So like you can only do what you can do, do you know what I mean? But um, I don't know, I was originally thinking I would do a second part of this in the series. I would do another one because I love the idea of these professionals picking what I read, but I don't know after this if if that should happen. I'm being quite honest with you because ugh, these weren't a hundred percent me. I was hoping for like a murder mystery recommendation. I don't think 
my tone of fantasy was really there either. But I think they gave me what I asked for, you know? But you can mean so many things with words, right? <laughs> like I maybe meant something a slightly different tonally than what they picked up on based on what I said, you know? So unfortunately this vlog is not a success, but let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought of them. These two I think I would recommend. This one, Oh, it had so much promise at the beginning and really went downhill. But thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future episodes of this series. I've got 10 of them planned. I've got two free spots that I'm open to. <laughs> I'm open to suggestions, but I'm, I'll probably come up with them throughout the year. But if you guys have any suggestions on sources I can find these book suggestions from, I want it to be me talking to a person. So I don't want it to be like me going on Goodreads and them recommending me books based on you liked this. Do you know what I mean? I want it to be like me with another person getting recommendations. So I've got most of them planned. But um, yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions and thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.